welcome to the improv summit as always i'm your host spencer and with me today i have a very special guest and that special guest today is take the first letter of the name put the adjective there it is practically perfect peter How's oh geez they, oh wow oh man i haven't played that game in a while i know and it's it's funny because i tell myself like i'm gonna do that every time i introduce a guest and i never think about it ahead of time so i'm actually improvising it when i have no reason to actually be oh, improvising it <laughs> oh so much improv right away uh yes hello. how's it going it's going good i'm peter stoya everyone hello hello uh actor and musician also i have done much improv in in the last eight years uh in la for sure so hopefully i can say something cool on on this <laughs> yeah i think uh, you can also say things that are uncool that's totally fine too oh, whatever great. whatever oh, works thank for God. that's a load off yeah. my shoulders yeah, we all know I'm not cool. I mean, clearly. Um, <coughs> I mean, I'm cool to my improv friends. Uh, yeah. Just kidding. I don't know. Whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd am i say that the preschoolers that I teach do not think I'm cool. They think I'm weird and they think I'm not funny. That because sounds, I, that sounds I do a like, lot of dad jokes. That's, yeah, that sounds to me like uh, normal kid behavior. They yeah. Just don't like what anybody tells them. Well, they're they're like they're like, you're weird. And then I go, I know. And they're like, you're 40 and I'm like, I'm not, but thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I had, I I had like, like, no, that's, that's like very, that's very much kid logic. If a person mm -hmm. is not, if a person is not in their teens, they are the oldest they could possibly be. They go immediately to like 50, 60, they go as far as they can. My favorite is, uh, I was teaching and I was like, I love doing dad jokes. And then something, and then later I walked into the room and the one kid I hear the kid whisper, he says, uh, Shh, don't say that your name is, don't say that you're hungry because he's going to say like, hi, hungry. How are you? So don't, <laughs> just don't say it. And it was like, so funny. Cause it was like, trying to, trying to one, trying to get ahead of you. <laughs> they like, minim I was like, they're ahead minimizing the my opportunity. That's really, really, but that's, I also that's had funny. a girl I think, once I was teaching. Oh, sorry. What are you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I think that, um, I think that, that is like the mark of, for you, that like lets you know, oh, they, they understand me. <laughs> yeah, I did something right. This is how, this talking is how about I am. Me. I'm leaving a legacy. No, but um, this one girl I had um, once, which was like when masks were mandated, like, or when, well, masks are still mandated in yeah, certain parts, but as we're wearing masks, like in person, I had like a, you know like a minions mask, a trolls mask. It's here like a pets. I had I had Harry Potter. Mm, don't know. Uh, anyways, <laughs> but I had all these masks and um, and I was wearing one of them. And I was like, what mask should I wear tomorrow? Should I wear Secret Life of Pets, Trolls, uh, Harry Potter, Super Mario Brothers? And she looks me dead in the eye. Uh, no, yeah, she looks me dead in the eye and goes, "Do you have any good movies?" And I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. Um, I was like, I guess not. I'm going to bring in my shining mask tomorrow and then my Casablanca mask. And then <laughs> I was like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is also when I was teaching Descendants and she was like, um, you should wear a Descendants mask. I'm like, oh, you think that's a good movie? OK, cool. Uh, I, know, I know what Descendants mask. Well, I know where the bar is like, now. Yeah, that's like one of what what in that movie could be on the mask besides the title of the movie. The, it's like, like the the apple the apple with the thing like it's like the logo. And she's like, you should just have one of those. I'm like, do you have one? She's like, no. I'm like, she's like, just buy one. I'm like, yeah. Let me go real quick onto the Descendants website and buy a Descendants mask real quick. Hold on, let me grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To add to this plethora of masks that I already have. That I hopefully won't need <laughs> much longer. <laughs> like that's like, you know, it's oh, like when I had had a well, holiday one. I mean, kids are an endless source of joy, honestly, for me personally. And knowledge, uh, whether, whether or not they are into what's going on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And when they're not, I, when they're not into what's going on personally for me, that's when it's the best. I was asking the kids a question the other day about the brain. I'm like, what are the parts of the brain? Like, what do they do? Da, da, da. And they're oh, like wow. answering questions and this one girl raises her hand 
like someone raised their hand they're like i have something i want to talk about and i was like ah well if it's not related like let's just keep all relevant information yeah, like sure, for what sure. we're doing right now and another girl raised her hand she goes I was like, you, uh, you want to answer? She goes, I don't have an answer to that. I just want to tell you a story about my dog. And she just started talking about it. And I was like, yep. cool. Anybody else have anything you want to say about the brain? Uh, it was like, great. I said, don't Pretty do great. it. And you did it. So, you know, that's just what happened. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of uh, kids, because we're talking about all these moments that kids improvise without realizing that they were improvising. Let's talk about uh, big boy improv. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with Yeah, let's get into big know, boy yeah. improv. Uh, big yeah. kid, big kid improv, big I guess. Kid. Big kid. <laughs> Big kid big improv. improv yes. um, so let's talk about you and your improv experience. What What is your background in improv? Uh, I started taking uh, improv classes in 2013, around that time. Uh, and initially I started because I had been going to UCB, going to, I was a huge comedy fan, been going to UCB for years. And uh, uh, I was thinking about sketch writing and everybody who I talked to suggested improv be one of the first things that I do. Uh, and so I took a, a 101 class and then it kind of just went from there. Uh, and I studied at Upright Citizens Brigade. I studied at uh, uh, The Nerdist, which became The Ruby. And uh, 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 did take also some classes at uh, The Pack. Um, and, uh, that's, 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 that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. That's, it's what I love about the show is I have people who have probably been around the world, like touring improv and doing all this, but I also have people who have done like a few classes here and there. And I've had people who are like, I just got on a, a team at a place and I've never taken an improv class. Uh, and mm -hmm. so like, that's what I love about the show is getting so many different perspectives. Sure. Um, well, also, like throwing in different schools, like the pack, which I don't have much of on this show, and I should probably get more of on, um, because yeah. the pack is such a different. Um, well, uh, it well also when I took classes there, it wasn't the pack; it was the Miles Straw workshop. Uh, uh -huh. uh, so I didn't quite experience like the whole revamping of it, and uh, whether or not that like affected you know the curriculum who you know what was being taught stuff sure. like that i don't know uh but you know i uh yeah nobody know uh, nobody knows I, I as far as i know nobody really knows about how it was the miles stroth workshop nobody um, knows right knows. Just kidding <laughs> No, please, kid around. I would have got a couple. Uh, I would have got a couple of grumbles from the kids in class, but then one kid would have. One kid wanted to like suck up to me, so he'd be like, "That was so funny, Mr. Spencer. That was. I think that one was really funny." I'm like, he I wants get it. to. He wants to try to to speak for the class to let yeah. them know, guys. Uh -huh. We have to let him be funny. It's like, like you're not getting anything out of this. So, like, if you don't like it, it's fine. I'm just gonna keep doing that. This uh, is this is who he is, guys. Yeah, this is me. Shut as up the greatest and let showman the says. teacher speak. Yeah, exactly. That's and that's exactly how he said it in that tone and everything. <laughs> same, word, same phrase and everything. Guys, <laughs> guys, be come on. We have to be respectful. That's me. Yeah, that shut was, up. That was that. Was, <laughs> no, shut up. That was me though. I was that kid when I was growing up for sure. I was the one who was like trying to do it right you know yeah i definitely was like a nerd as a kid but like nerds yeah, are nerd. cool now so like dirty boy. whatever nerds are cool now so it's like whatever um <laughs> that being said <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of nerds being cool this is a completely unrelated question but you know like why not <laughs> sure. um, what uh what uh what do you love about improv what what um kept you like taking different classes or performing improv like what do you love about it? uh i think um some of the things that really stuck out to me were just that the scene just kind of evolved naturally out of whatever happened. Um, and, you know, I also was pretty happy about the fact that like, okay, I'm here. I don't need to worry if I don't do it right. I don't need to worry if I make a mistake. Uh, uh, everything that is happening and everything that I do is 
uh, a part of it. And uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was just really, a, you know, in theory, <laughs> a fun environment and uh, uh, a really fun way of, 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 of performing. Um, uh, up until that point, I'd only uh, acted in college and been in some plays and um, it was, yeah, it was just like a, a new way of performing that I didn't really uh, consider before. And so, yeah, I just, I think that was why I kind of just really fell into it. Sure. That's great. I love it. And speaking of that, um, as we know, improv is so vast. There's, there's so much to improv. And I, I was wondering mm -hmm. how you use improv, like in your everyday life, that's like non improv non-actory kind of like scenarios. Like, like, how do you use improv? How do you pull concepts of improv and use them in your daily life? It's like, oh, that's a very good question. Um, I would say that, I mean, like, just to start the, the answer, uh, <laughs> I've always, I always felt like even at, uh, during my one-on-one time that like improv is just like life. Every day we're just going out and trying to figure out what to do so it just like everything that I learned in improv and and things that the teachers would say and stuff I just thought about how like this is like how this is how people act this is what people do um and I there was something very uh uh, uh interesting to me about that that this is literally the same thing that people do every day except that we're also trying to make it funny and trying to go to the 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 comedy of these situations because comedy the comedy also is inherent in like everyday mm -hmm. situations uh and sometimes people aren't Sometimes people are purposely not trying to be funny. Sometimes people are like trying to egg people on uh, or whatever. So <clears throat> it's it, it, thinking thinking about it like that. Even when I first started, was like the that was like the coolest thing to me that it was just life. It was just that's just the way it is. Uh, so I mean, um, I can't think of any particular improv lesson right at this moment. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, like the moment that like I walk outside, I'm just like trying to deal with, <laughs> just trying to deal with anything that might happen. I don't know who I'm going to see. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, not how long it's gonna take to get to somewhere or whatever. So it's uh, very like, natural thing it's just i'm trying to figure it out mm, yeah that's great yeah try i think i think the idea of trying to figure it out is something in interesting because in improv i had this thing for a while where i was like i want to do improv right and like improvising in a scene like well when am i ever gonna do it like i don't know like there's no like, I, right I, I, wrong I completely agree improv. i too i too i too was very much the no it has to be right yeah come so on think, guys yeah we have to i think do it's the just, scene correctly <laughs> which is like and then again it's like correct is so many different ways in that in that, in that suggestion or that moment but i think the idea of trying to figure it out is, is so fascinating because there's this thing that i learned once in improv which i was like i'm trying to find what it is and Someone told me once, don't say find, say discover. And what I what I loved about that moment is that I, I'm I'm actually legitimately trying to figure out how I want the scene to go, but my character is discovering in the, in the scene. So I, as an improviser, I'm discovering um, how the scene is working. And so I love that idea of figuring it out as I go because all this there's literally no stakes in improv like, yeah. at all. That's um, the one like, thing that like I didn't quite get right yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, is that this isn't the most important thing in the world. Like, what, and it's I like do, then, what I'm doing in the scene isn't the most important yeah. thing in the world. 
and that's uh, what I discovered is yeah. like when I do improv, like if I if I do like not a great scene, like what's gonna happen? I don't like I don't like explode like the dog in the fire, you know, like there's not like a fire <laughs> around me and I'm just sitting around. Like it literally is like, oh, okay, what happened to that scene? I don't even remember twenty minutes just, later. I just, just forget just about sitting it. There, like, just sitting there going, Everything is fine. Yeah, exactly. But it's like it's like I don't <laughs> I literally don't even remember it 20 minutes later. So like, what, what are these stakes really? Like, I mean, no. I, I do, I hardly remember. I hardly remember scenes, which is funny because I'm asking you this question about remembering improv because there are very rarely moments that I remember improv and the moments that I remember are like, if it's like, I just like, I recently watched improvised Shakespeare company. So of course I remember like moments oh, of wow. that. I may, I may forget it in like a couple of years. I don't know. But sure. like there are moments when I'm like auditioning or when I have these aha moments where I'm like, oh i like understand this like element of improv and yes. so like those are moments where i like remember these because it, it gave me that moment of discovery are there any like any improv scenes in general that you remember like two person scenes or like group scenes or whatever that you remember that you're like i love this scene because this person was doing this this person was doing this they were this was their relationship whatever it is like what what to you are there any are there any scenes that you remember that you're like i will never forget this scene Thank you for asking. That's because uh, I do like to think of like scenes that I've done before, and um, one that always sticks out to me for whatever reason was the one of the last scenes that I did before the lockdown took effect. Uh, uh, it was a Valentine's Day show, and I stepped out with one other person and started doing. Anakin Skywalker's I Hate Sand scene from episode two. And uh, <laughs> it became Darth Vader discovering that Emperor Palpatine was secretly bisexual. And mm. uh, <laughs> it was the way, it, I mean, like I am a huge Star Wars fan, not that that's like a unique thing or anything, but uh like from from moment one i think when like you know like i heard people in the audience going ah like they knew exactly what the scene was and that always helps too when the audience is yeah. incredible is on board because that doesn't always happen no it doesn't um, um but yeah like and specifically in the scene i don't remember a ton but uh it, just the the evolution from me just saying the line from the movie and then <laughs> going forward and also it like dealt with like uh, anakin slash darth vader was like wondering what his sexuality was in the scene so like it was like a uh and that's like another thing that i really like is like even if you do a scene that's like completely not set in rea in our reality mm -hmm. it's it has it's it's guided by the things that are happening in real life. So yeah, of course, why wouldn't these characters in a different galaxy wonder about who they like and what they <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. You know, so it was, yeah, there's something about that that really uh, 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 tickled me. Um, uh, and I just, it, there's just other scenes that, you know, they all kind of jumbled together, but like moments where like, you make eye contact with one of the other performers and you both know exactly what to do once you both step out from the back line or something like that. Um, or somebody says something and you just know like, okay, I'm already, I've already been this way in the scene. I know exactly what to do next kind of a thing. There's just something really exciting about, you know, being able to build the scene from the ground up right away like that is really mm. uh really 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 cool yeah that's great i love the idea of like you know not coming in with all the ideas but like taking it where you're like okay this is the moment i'm in what am i hearing what am i seeing what am i observing and just kind of going from there which leads me into my next question that's completely unrelated um and that question is um do you have any plugs or pitches anything you want to shout out uh share <laughs> question i don't know whatever you have this is your time oh gosh to do okay that. oh wow um <laughs> uh I would this is one question I was not expecting. Um I uh well uh 
one thing I've uh, been doing since last year is, oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I love it. That's great. That's going to forever live on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> i needed uh, i needed to get out um, yeah i i feel it sometimes it's like unleashing a beast like within like it's i'll feel a certain way like all day and then all of a sudden i'll like feel it come out and like there it is ah oh! yeah like i, and, I can't I mean, that was be- that was better than me trying to go through my answer still needing to burp yeah uh, which uh, is also fine i've talked which to is also to fine i'll burp. agree that's a great <laughs> improv premise right off the bat here on the Improv Summit Burp Edition. Yeah, Burp uh, Edition. Um, <laughs> uh, well, since last year, I've been um, doing this little thing that I'm hoping to continue. It's uh, like a little company that I created by myself called Mutt Media. And basically kind of just an excuse to like, it started as just an excuse to like post pictures of like things in my collection or uh, 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 things I'm working on because I started doing like crafting and like I have a very large VHS collection as well so like it's uh, it kind of started like that and um, then this te- this improv team uh, that I was on Scene Kids uh, we had uh, we released a video during the lockdown uh, online and then I Uh, very crazily got it in my head that I was going to make a VHS version of this video. Uh, And uh, uh, the year, the year prior, I luckily found uh, a a VCR DVD combo that like you can dub between the two. So you can record a VHS onto a DVD or vice versa. And so then once I got that, I was like, this is, Oh my God, this is going to happen. Um, so that was kind of like now I can make some cool stuff. I could make like a, mm-hmm. a VHS tape. I can make some cool art stuff like that. So it's kind of ballooned into that, I would say. And uh, it's at Mutt Worldwide Media Conglomerate on Instagram. Very easy to remember. <laughs> and, uh, uh, what I mean, what uh, what else? Um, I don't know, man. It's just, things are going crazy, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And those will all be linked down in the, yeah. the YouTube description, so Great. you can you can click on things there and I, you know, add other things and change other things and all that stuff. Anyway, it'll be, it'll be down uh, there. Yeah, right. Oh, I never get there. to do this. I never get to do this in a in a video. I'm like, I feel like a real. <laughs> A real YouTube celebrity right. right now. Well, now here's my bucket list. Let me just uh, check that off from the yeah. top. Uh, <laughs> and that's my list. Okay. Um, that's my bucket list. Goodbye, uh, everybody. Com- completed. Uh, Yay. Okay. Peter, thanks so much for joining me here on the Improv Summit. Um, You're welcome. I have one final question for you. Please. And that question is kind of the reason why the Improv Summit exists. Now, Please. prior to pandemic, and even now with pandemic being... Uh, a, a weird way of having improv being so accessible from anywhere in the world. Um, a lot of people would ask me prior to, and even during, like, you take a lot of improv, where should I take improv? It's a hard question to answer because I feel like it's very involved. But if someone came yeah. up to you and said, hey, Peter, you take a lot of improv, you've done improv, where should I take improv? What would be one piece of advice or one tip you'd help uh, give to someone to help guide them on their improv journey? Um. I think, I, I think my tip would definitely be uh, uh, not specific to any one school or anything, because I don't think any tip could be specific to any one school. Every school, at least in Los Angeles, is incredibly different. Um, so I think the best tip that somebody could have probably is that, or at least for me, is that, um, It's all so incredibly different. So just whatever school you feel more attracted to or whatever, uh, just just go in and learn what they do, learn how they do it. And that, you know, just be open to whatever they're going to teach you. Um, um, Because, you know, there are schools that I've never gone to as well. So um this is only based on you know my somewhat 
my 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 I don't know <laughs> my 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 small yeah. little my small little experience. Uh, but yeah, whatever school the person feels like they might be attracted to, if they don't know what school to go with, I think it. I think it doesn't quite matter what one you choose. There is a good chance that you'll probably go to more than one if you're very into improv. Um, uh, so just go and, you know, see what they teach and, and, uh, and whatever information hits you, whatever you feel like you could learn the most with or whatever, take it and, 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 and go. I love it. I love it. It's, 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 it's just, it's just taking it and go like, just, yeah. just do it. Uh, as, as Mikey it, says, it, just it's do it. A, it took me eight years to realize. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Curses. Uh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, like improv is like, like improv, like it's a cartoon and you're like the, the cartoon bad guy, but you're just trying to learn improv. It's also funny. The, These the, teachers did it to me again. The kids, the kids are like, were you the voice of Patrick? And I was like, no. And do I sound like the voice of Patrick? I was like, oh, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. And I was like, I don't, literally don't even, like, I'm not good with impressions. And I was like, I don't know where they thought I was. They're like, oh, my God, did you do the voice? They're like, you're so good at it. I'm like, okay, thanks. I, but that was, just, I was just, like, a, just as a small aside, uh, when I started going to college, I would frequently get the, uh, I would frequently be told that I look and sound like Seth Rogen. And uh -huh. um, just very recently, <laughs> somebody asked me, do you know who you look and sound like? And so obviously I was, I was, uh, I had my idea, but they told me that I look and sound like Judd Apatow. So that, huh. yeah, yeah, I mean, like it has nothing to do with anything, but it, it, it <laughs> It would just Most of like, what I say has nothing. Wait to a do minute! With it. Wait a minute! Like they're so, they're so close, but like, in, uh, just me thinking about it, they're so they're incredibly different people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not at all similar, and yet I I am like between, I am like you know I guess I'm the morphed image if you took those two and put them together. Interesting. Maybe uh, I don't interesting. know. Interesting. Interesting thing to leave on. Uh, no, I mean, because, I, oh gosh. Because oh, as I said, okay. <laughs> as I said, well, as I said, that was the last question I had for you on the Yes, of course. Um, so that's what we're leaving on, of course, without any other possible thing that could happen between now oh, and then. Oh, no. Um, but that being said, um, as always on the show, I'm a giant liar. So I do actually have another question <laughs> for you. Oh, okay, great. Um, and that question is, you know, we've been talking a lot about improv. You want to do some improv? I do want to do some improv. Why not? All right, this let's do the it. First improv I've done in over a year. You're not the only one. Oh, great. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's do it. All right, cool. All right, let's do some improv. Now, Yay. as we talked about Peter, we know that there's a lot of different types of improv. Improv is all over the place with the different types, different styles, different schools of thought and everything. So I want to play around with the idea of improv being very specific giving us a little bit more of a structured improv. Um, okay. And I uh, have a scene between two people. Uh, it's two characters in a scene. Uh, we will be playing the two characters. It doesn't matter who's playing which one. We're going to cast it out here in a bit um, just to give us a little extra more structure in that improv. Um, but I was inspired by, um, you said a Valentine's Day show with a uh, Star Wars character. So for some yeah, reason great. that inspired me. So as you were telling that story, I kind of did a quick like, Google to like kind of get uh, some characters that may be involved in a Valentine's Day type scene. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to post into the chat um, the suggestion that kind of morphed itself into from different suggestion generator Googly things cool. of a two person scene. So what I'm gonna have you do is read this two person scene out loud is the first thing we're gonna do. Okay. All right. A groom surprises his newlywed bride on their honeymoon with a date night at a fancy restaurant. Jackie, um, I know this is a little unconventional, but... Oh, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, here we are in the middle of a circus tent. Like right in the heart of the circus. Uh, we got the acrobats is, around us. I'm not going to lie. This is 
without a doubt the weirdest thing I have ever done. It's, it's pretty uncanny. So I am it's I am pretty... going to I am going to suspend my 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 disbelief for a little bit and see what happens. But um, I mean, I I told you about what happened with the clown when I was a kid, right? Yeah, there's yeah, there's no no clowns, no clowns. Did you see, I I I I did this just for us. I told them I want the full package, but I don't want clowns. Oh, and I said, okay, sure. That is such they a charge, lift it charge me more, what? but it was it was worth it. They charged you. you more for for what? For less for not having clowns. Oh, okay. They charged you. Wow, that's yeah, so weird. They said it was more of an inconvenience. They charged you. Like, they charged you. Oh wow! I'm not even. Yeah. I don't even want to get into but that. That's just crazy. I did it. I did it for you. So the same day that I met three years ago. I love you, Jackie. Oh, watch out for oh, the trap piece. It's, it's what? Just watch, watch out for the trap piece. It's just oh, stuck. Just stuck. Right. Wait a minute. Why are there people up on the trapeze? They're doing a trapeze routine. Now? Oh. Yeah, it's 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 like a it's an immersive show. Immersive dinner. Oh boy. Uh, do we have to do we have to perform? I don't I don't perform. I can't perform. Um, I've not ever done it before. Do we have to we don't perform? Want to try? We don't have to. I mean, do you want do you want to try? Cannot believe you are doing this to me right now. I, I was, I, I, I felt a little okay when you said there weren't any clowns, but now I have. I mean, next thing you're going to tell me is that an audience is going to come into this tent. Oh, we won't. We don't have to do that. I can, I can cancel them. We. All right experience I want it to be okay fine what do you want me to do I mean what would you like to do oh, God. I don't I have no, I don't have no idea I, I mean I mean I mean I think you know there's no clowns at the circus the audience is gonna come I for know clowns. okay I know there are no clowns Everything else, though, seems to, everything else that's a part of the circus seems to be here, though. Yeah, the elephants are coming in. I think I, I think don't we could, want the elephants to come in. Well, I think we could we could be the clowns. I'm absolutely speechless right now. But just just think about it. You can you can entertain a lot of guests. We can spend time together, and you can get over your fear. I just did not expect me. I just did not expect a situation where I would need to get over a fear today. I'm sorry. Uh, let me calm down for a little. Oh, man. Sorry. <sighs> Jackie. Jackie. I mean, I also told you that the clown tried to pull me up into the act, and I was just standing there completely still because... I don't know what to do when I'm asked to perform for people. No, I just was trying to trying to help. <sighs> okay, well, if you could be like the director, and I, 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 if you want to tell me what to do, that would help a lot because I don't know what to do on my own. Jackie, come here. Give me your hand. Give me your hands. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... There they are. I know it's it's a lot happening. Yeah, so I, I love you with all my heart. And I trust you. And all I ask is that you trust me to help you. Do you trust me? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then let's get in our let's get in our clown outfits and get out there. You motherfucker. Christine. 
Thanks everybody so much for coming to the improv. Summon as always, I'm your host Spencer. With me, I have Peter. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs> yeah, bye.